I'll be going over the post-tension concrete books that I have on my desk and I'll be going over how good they are and how valuable they are, how often I use them, and if they're worth getting on your desk. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm a structural PM in the Southern California area. Let's jump right into today's content. The first book that I'm gonna be going over is Post Tension Concrete Principles and Practice by Dirk Bondi and Brian Alred. As a practicing engineer, I cannot say enough about how practical this book is and how helpful it's been to me as I was I was, I was first learning how to do post-tension concrete. I took a post-tension concrete class, um, you know, in school, but it, as I got into the industry, uh, you really got to see how it's really used and the type of construction that they typically use out in the field. What I really like about this book is that it shows you kind of the, takes you through the process of how uh, a real structural engineer typically designs slabs. So, they'll go through a preliminary design. So you won't go through the whole design. You'll see like, hey, here are the loads. What's the preliminary slab thickness? And how many approximate tendons can we do? What's the very quick and dirty way to, to just, just, just to get a design out? And then it eventually shows you how to do the full complete design using some, uh, first of all, by doing it by hand, but then it also goes in through a, a structural analysis program that they have in there and that they use to basically get the final calculations out and it shows you how to do the complete structural design of a post-tension concrete slab. I think what really separates this book from all the others is just how practical it is. It actually goes into things that you don't really encounter in your theoretical books. So they'll go into um, how they shore things, um, what's what to look out for when you're out there in the field. So common field errors that you can watch out for. So I learned a lot of things on that just uh, before going to the field. I read up on some of these things that, that really helped me out. It also goes into podium designs. So that's a thing, at least in California and, and in the US, it's becoming more and more popular and it's pretty common now. So it, it goes over some of the detailing issues, some of the construction issues that you, you don't really see in theoretical books. And another thing that I really liked about it is that it went into seismic design pretty well. It actually takes you through a dynamic analysis by hand and it makes it a lot simpler than, you know, what you read in a structural dynamics class. It's really, he, he simplifies it to basically the bare minimum of what you need to, to do as a structural engineer to do a dynamic analysis. And it shows you how to do it by hand so you can check it with your software analysis program. So it's a really good way just to see um, what what are those important things that you need to do in a seismic design. And it goes into uh, cords, collectors, and, and diaphragm design. It does that very, very well. And it's something that uh, one of the resources that I use to to do diaphragm calculations. You can even see how much I used it. I tabbed it, not, not <laughs> Not very well, this is pretty bad tapping, but you can just see how much I use it every day in my post-tension uh, design. And it also goes into, like I said, the practical things, like even just fireproofing, uh, how much concrete cover do you need for your, your building code and, and the fire uh, requirements. So things like that, that you don't really see in theoretical books. That's why I highly, highly recommend this book if you're a practicing structural engineer that's uh, mainly doing buildings. So, hands down, you should absolutely get this book. I believe Bondi and Alred have a new version, a fourth edition of this. I'll link it down below in the description below. Another cool thing is that uh, Bondi has a YouTube channel. He actually lectures about this and he has recordings of all his classes on YouTube. So, if you've never taken a concrete, uh, a post-tension concrete design class, and you wanna go through his lectures, he has that up on YouTube for free. So I will link his channel below also. The next book I have on my desk is the Post Tensioning Manual, uh, sixth edition. It's by the Post Tensioning Institute. This one was really helpful for me when I first started out. I didn't really know what post tensioned concrete looked, out, looked like in the field. Uh, so this book actually had a lot of pictures, a lot of uh, how they construct it, what post tensioning is and how the different types of uh, applications it has in the field, not just with slabs, but it also goes through how they do bridges and storage tanks and different types of slabs and beam systems. What's really good with the post tensioning manual and that I found pretty valuable were the details 
in it. So a lot of the details that they have in there, if your firm does a lot of post-tension concrete, those are pretty much where they're pulling the details from because they're, they're pretty standard, but it kind of breaks down the details and why those details um, are like that. It also has a lot of example calculations, not just with different types of systems, but it also has seismic design calculations uh, if you're in a seismic area. It has lots of field photos, so you get to know a lot about it, and it goes over some of the history of post-tension concrete also. So for me, I'm rating it as a good to have. It's it's not absolutely essential, but you know I've res referenced it plenty of times uh, looking at details and why we're doing details that way. So it's definitely good to have on your desk. I'll link that. Uh, book below also. The last book I have on my desk is Pre-Stress Concrete, A Fundamental Approach by Edward Nawi. This was the book that I had when I was taking a post-tension concrete classes uh, uh, during my, my undergrad. I use this book during my undergrad post-tension concrete classes and uh, definitely a good theoretical book to have on hand if you need to dive deeper into um, some of how the concepts like shrinkage and pre-stress losses a very good book to have i use it a couple times to do a little more research but for the most part uh, i haven't really used it too much during the industry so during the industry i've used the, those other two books that i mentioned this book definitely taught me the fundamentals of pre-stressed concrete and a little bit of post-tension concrete too like i said if you're a practicing engineer i think the best way for you to learn post-tension concrete is uh, go to go to Dirk Bondi's YouTube channel, go through all his classes and follow with him um, the chapters in his book. And I think that's the most efficient way if for you to be designing post-tension concrete if you've never designed it before. If you want to support the channel and you're interested in these books, I'll put them in the links below. If you click them, I do get a commission. So if you want to help support the channel, I really appreciate it. If not, you know, just, just Google the books below. It's, it's really not going to matter to me that much. Make sure to check out my podcast below, smash that like button, and make sure to subscribe. And also comment down below if you agree with my uh, reviews or not. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.